Okay, let's go ahead and find the solution to this nice little algebra word problem here. And of course, the first step when you're trying to solve any problem in math is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says a rectangular room is twice as long as it is wide. The perimeter is 84 feet. What are the dimensions of the room? So if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answers into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution step by step as well. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I can uh, learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in mathematics. Please do not give up. There is hope. But uh, let me tell you the three things you need in order to be successful in math. One, you need to be willing to work hard. Okay, there are no shortcuts. So if you're looking for shortcuts, if you're looking for an easy way out, just stop looking and be willing to put in the work, i.e. take notes, do all your homework, etc., etc. The second thing you need is encouragement, right? So you need to know that you can actually do this. And you need someone like, say, myself saying, hey, you can make it, right? So don't give up. Be willing to put in the work because eventually you will see success. But here's the last thing you need and probably the most important thing you need, and that is great math instruction, okay? So whatever you're learning from or whoever you're learning from in terms of mathematics, you got to be able to understand what they're saying to you. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to learn math and having uh, really no idea what's going on. You're not going to learn math that way. See, math is a very technical subject, and I could teach it to you in a very technical way, but that's not a good way to teach. Okay. Well, the way I like to do things is to explain math in a way that anyone and everyone can understand without watering things down. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link uh, to my program uh, in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. Some students take no notes. If you truly want to be great at math, you have to learn how to take great math notes. But if you don't have great notes right now, you can use mine if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this question. And of course, this is a word problem. And, uh, and I'm going to walk through all those steps in a second. But here is the um, answer. This particular rectangular room, uh, the dimensions would be 14 feet by 28 feet. There you go. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's pretty good. Matter of fact, uh, certainly good enough to earn yourself a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars, so you can brag to your friends and family that you know how to do math word problems. So, you know, as a teacher, there's nothing more, you know, um, I don't think rewarding or enjoyable than to put a bunch of nice, you know, uh, fancy, you know, remarks and 100% and A pluses on, on people's tests and quizzes. No teacher, at least, well, maybe there are teachers out there, I'm sure there are, enjoys putting Fs and Ds and stuff like that. Listen, you know, even though I've had to unfortunately give these type of grades. I certainly rather give these type of grades. But listen, I'm telling you right now, even if you didn't get this poem right, and even if you are getting F's and D's, this is just your current, uh, you know, this is just the result of what you currently know. So don't get stuck in like, oh, I am bad at math because I got an F or D, therefore I will never learn this material, right? That is not the case. It just happens to be your one, you know, uh, feedback on that one particular problem, Great, right? You could certainly, um, you know, improve from there. But anyways, this is the answer. Now let's go ahead and get into the problem. So we're dealing with a, a math word problem, okay? And I did tell you uh, this was an algebra word problem. And this is a very, very typical type of problem that you're going to uh, see, like in a pre-algebra course, uh, definitely algebra one, certainly something like algebra two. 
So let me tell you the first three steps to solve any math word problem, whether it be algebra or not. The first step is to read the problem. The second step is to reread the problem. And guess what the third step is? Read the problem again and make sure you understand what the question is. Uh, here's the, the the deal here. A lot of students will read the problem once and they'll start doing stuff. Okay, they'll just like, oh, I know what's going on, and they'll just start, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing things, you know, with numbers and variables and whatnot. You want to calm your mind down, read, really understand. Even if you understand what's going on the first time, take a deep breath and start pulling more information from uh, from the problem. Okay, so this is what you need to do to approach any word problem. So we're dealing with a rectangular room. So we need to know what this word means here. So we could have, if I didn't say if it was a rectangular room, you could have a room that might be like this shape, right? So that could be a room. You could have a room that's maybe like this shape. So this word is important. We're, we are dealing with a rectangular rectangle okay as the shape of the room so you need to know something about rectangles of course i'm going to talk about that in one second so uh we know that th that the room is twice as long as it is wide so mentally speaking you're thinking all right this is the length and here's the width so we're going to have some sort of rectangular room where it's uh twice as long as the width and then we um, are being told that the perimeter is 84 feet so we need to understand what this word here, the perimeter, means. So what is the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is the sum total around, um, if you add up the sides of any figures, uh, the sum total is called the perimeter. So here, if we have a particular rectangular room, if we add up this side, this side, these are the lengths, by the way, I'm talking about. This length, this length, this length, and this length, we have found the perimeter of that particular room. But just to make sure you uh, completely understand the perimeter, if I had some sort of figure like this, and I said find the perimeter of this figure, well, what you, uh, you would do is if you had the lengths around this particular figure, you would add up this side, this side, this side, this side, this side, and that side, you then uh, you would have found the perimeter. So again, um, obviously, if you didn't know what the perimeter uh, was or you forgot, well, you're not going to be able to do this problem. But now I've kind of explained all this to you. All right, so after you've got a firm grasp on the information of the problem, we want to make sure we understand the uh, question. And the question is, what are the dimensions? Okay, what are the dimensions, i.e., what is the length and the width of this rectangular room? Now, before we even get into the problem, okay, uh, I am focusing on what is the question. The question is the dimensions. So anytime you're being asked for length, width, volume, area, anything like that, anything that involves a unit of measure, okay, make sure your final answer has that respective unit of measure. So in other words, our dimension, because our perimeter is in feet, we're going to have our dimensions in feet as well. So you need to be on high alert on that because if you just gave a number as your final answer and not the respective unit of measure, there are some, uh, you know, math teachers, maybe they're a little bit mean, you know, they'll be like, you know, you didn't do that right, and they're going to take off a few points off your answer. So you don't want that to happen to you. All right, so now... You know, we have a really good sense of what's going on uh, and what we're going to do. Now, the next thing we want is some sort of model, okay, a visual model to represent what's going on here. And, of course, we are dealing with a rectangle. So here is a lovely rectangle. We can draw it like this. We have the width. We have the length. Now we have to think about, all right, the um, length is twice as much as the width. So we're going to need some variables here in order to figure out the answer, right? So when you draw your little rectangle, there's a couple things going on. One, we need to make sure we understand properties of a rectangle, and uh, namely that the opposite lengths, okay, opposite sides are congruent. In other words, whatever the uh, length of, uh, or whatever the dimension is of this side, it's the same as this side. Whatever the width is here, it's gonna be the same thing here, okay? That is a property of a rectangle. So. Let's go ahead and assign the. Uh, let's go ahead and assign the variable x to represent the width. Okay, so if we let x equal the width, 2x, which is uh, uh, twice the width, will be the length. Okay, so we're going to go back and double check that we have this right. So we have a rectangular room uh, is twice as long. Okay, as it is wide. So if the room is x wide, okay, its length is going to be twice its width or 2x, 
Okay, so make sure that when you have your model out here, uh, you, whatever model you write, and probably most of you did draw a little rectangle like this. When you assign your variables, okay, make sure it makes sense, right? Well, if this x is the width, then 2x would be the length. This makes sense. So now we can go ahead and take our next move to solve this problem. So we have some variables here, x, right? And 2, well, 2x is a term, but the variable x, we need to solve for x. So anytime you're trying to solve for a variable, what are we going to need to do? We're going to need to construct an equation, okay? So that's always going to be the next move when you're trying to solve an algebra word problem is one, once you have assigned some variables, okay, we need to create an equation so we can solve for that variable. So the easiest thing to do here is to use that other piece of information we have, which is the perimeter, okay? So we know the perimeter is 84 feet. And now that you remember what the perimeter is, right, that means that this side, okay, or this uh, dimension, okay, whatever this uh, dimension is here, plus this, plus this, plus this, if we go around this whole rectangle, it's going to add up to 84 feet. That is the perimeter. So we can go ahead and construct a, a, an actual equation here. This plus this plus this plus this will be equal to that. And you can see I actually did this work right here. So we have x plus 2x uh, plus x plus 2x. There's a couple different ways you can kind of write this in a different way. You could be like, oh, twice the width. I could have gone 2 times 2x plus 2 times x. Whoops, 2, not 2 times w. Uh, 2 times x. x is the width is 84. You can do it this way or you could just do it this way as well. Now we uh, need to be able to solve this basic equation. So let's go and do that now. So x plus 2x plus x plus 2x. How many x's are there here? There are 6x's. So we have the equation 6x is equal to 84. How do I solve for x? Easy. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 6, and we get x is equal to 84. All right, so if you're struggling with any of this stuff, um, you know, if you're like, oh, I'm a little bit rusty on basic equations or basic geometry, things like that, I'm going to suggest that you check out my pre-algebra course. Okay, I think it would be probably appropriate for those of you uh, that are, you know, struggling with basic equations. Of course, if you're in Algebra 1, you can check out my Algebra 1 uh, course as well. All right, so now that we know that uh, x is equal to 14, we can actually um, answer this um, uh, question now because remember we have our diagram, x is the width, right? So the width, whatever x is equal to, of course x is equal to 14, that's going to be the width. But remember, it's not just x equals 14. We have to put in that unit of measure of feet. So the width is 14 feet. And if we know the length, okay, is twice the width, well, that's just going to be 2 times whatever the width is, which, of course, is 14. So 2 times 14 will give us 28 or 28 feet. All right. So, um, again, you know, this is a very standard, typical, classic type of algebra word problem. And that's the thing with um, algebra and word problems is that, um, you know, I've been doing this for not years, but decades. If you know how to do this type of problem, okay, you're going you're gonna to see this come up in pre-algebra, algebra 1, perimeter problems, area problems, rate, speed, distance type of problems. These are the kind of classic algebra problems that you really need to understand. Now, there's, of course, there's um, more complicated uh, algebra problems, but these uh, type of problems, especially the ones I like to post on my YouTube channel, are kind of typical type of problems that you need to make sure you know how to do, especially if you're at those uh, um, algebra one, algebra two levels. This will probably be introduced to you at the pre-algebra level. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you're like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm going to get better at word problems or like I'm understanding this stuff. I do have uh, many more additional uh, practice word problems on my YouTube channel, but again, you can't solve any word problems, uh, algebra word problems, unless you understand the underlying algebra. So make sure you uh, clear up any confusion you're having on any particular math skill, because if you're struggling with solving equations or some other type of uh, fundamental algebra uh, topic, you're not going to be able to solve these word problems. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.